everybody, I'm Logan, and this is my dad. <laughs> I, we're going to do something a little crazy that I might have convinced my dad to help me out with here. And that is watching every single MCU movie that's been released so far, and possibly the ones that will be released later, in a specific order that I think is the best way to watch them. So, I will read those off right now. So, we're starting off today with Captain America, the first Avenger. The rest of Phase 1 goes... Iron Man, Iron Man 2, The Incredible Hulk, everyone's favorite, um, Thor, The Avengers, Iron Man 3, Thor The Dark World, um, Captain America Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, um, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, Avengers Age of Ultron, Ant-Man, Doctor Strange, Captain America Civil War, Spider-Man Homecoming, Black Panther, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Captain Marvel, Thor Ragnarok, Avengers Infinity War, and the soon-to-be titled Avengers 4. All of them in that order. What that better is... way to celebrate an old man than to go back in time? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Which is what we are doing with the first one here. We are going back to, uh, in time with the old... Uh, probably good. one of the oldest Avengers next to Thor, I guess. Thor's. Mm -hmm. We've just recently found out Thor's like 1,500 years old. But, uh... Yeah, so today we're going to be looking at Captain America, the first Avenger, which is, who is, it's directed by, who was that It again? was Joe, Joe, Joe Johnston. Joe Johnston, who also directed a movie that Dad introduced me to that was really good with, uh... October yeah. Sky. Yeah. And Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal's very first, one of his very first movies. Yeah. And that movie is pretty good. Um, he has a couple other ones that aren't quite Funny, as... I Shrunk the Kids, <laughs> Jurassic Park 3. <laughs> and uh, what was the other one? Oh, Jumanji. Yeah, the original Jumanji. Yeah, kind of a wild card for directing this one because some of them were really good and some of them were... So, yeah, this movie... Um, Dad was not so sure about it because of who they cast for Captain America back then. I wanted to see an older guy. Of course, us older guys like to see older guys on screen, <laughs> so... I think it's because um, we grew up, me and my brothers grew up playing um, Marvel's Ultimate Alliance, and in that there's a lot of really good looking cutscenes, and Cap looks significantly older in those cutscenes. And he looked tough, he looked rough, you know, and the Chris uh, Evans had already made his MCU debut in the, uh, well, I don't know if it's technically an MCU debut, but he was in Marvel, he was, you know, he was, uh, what, Flame, he was Torch. He yeah, he was torch. Human Torch. Were you just... Waiting outside the bathroom to try and catch me in a towel? He was a funny kid. He was a funny guy. But I didn't picture a funny kid being Captain America. Being so. <laughs> the perfect Captain America, and almost. He, yeah, he, he <laughs> did it. It did amazing. So, you know, it was kind of surprising to see him in it. But I was excited to see Tommy Lee Jones, another old guy, mm -hmm. you know, doing his <laughs> first MCU appearance. You know, you don't forget it. You mm -hmm. never forget Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, man, he's great. Mm -hmm. And, um,. And, and then, uh, who's the actress who played Agent Carter? Check that out. Um, Haley Atwell? Yeah. Haley Atwell. Yeah, she was great. And she ended up getting her own series, which needs a s third season already. It's o it's already has two seasons, Agent Carter. But um, I think that... Yeah, it, I, don't rec I didn't, know, rec didn't recognize her at all. I've never seen her in anything else before this. Yeah. She's done other things, obviously, but none of the things that I would have seen. Mm -hmm. I, I can't really... Yeah, I didn't recognize her at all. And then we saw, like, Hugo Weaving, who plays uh, Red Skull. We were looking at one of his... Like, his picture on uh, Wikipedia. He looks like Captain America. First <laughs> time I've ever seen the guy look tough and rough. I mean, he was just, you know, Mr. Andrew. He was, you know, what was Yeah, his, his Agent, Wikipedia uh, photo. And then, yeah. was he in Matrix? He, yeah, Agent, Agent Smith. He was Agent Smith, you And, know. uh... Uh, Elrond of Rivendell. <laughs> yeah, but he looks—he looked like a Captain America. You have to show that picture. One yeah, one. I will I'll just definitely throw that picture up of uh, Hugo Weaving, and then—and I did not know that Hugo Weaving was in Happy Feet. What? Who, who the hell was he in Happy Noah. Feet? Noah. Noah in Happy Feet. Noah. Who's Noah? Now that's a range. Yeah, you can right? pull off Red Skull, and you can be Happy Feet. That's, <laughs> I that's am, a gift, man. Yeah, all right. I'm throwing like up a clip of this Noah person. You, be gone. And Megatron. He was Megatron in Transformers. Yeah, he was I mean, that's Megatron. crazy. Oh, hail Megatron. Do yep. Thomas would have some things to say about that because he's the Transformers guy. But um, yeah. So here we go with uh, Captain America: First Avenger. It's got some. It's got a great cast. I mean, and um. I think it's one of the most underrated 
um, in the MCU series because definitely the character that got the best trilogy out of the main three and Avengers. the best backstory. I think he got. I mean, I think you got you got to see one of the best backstories before pre superhero and then superhero because I mean mm-hmm. you know with uh, even with Iron Man you just you just saw him pretty much already in the middle of making stuff. So yeah, and so we're gonna take a look at it and then we'll come back to you guys once we finish the movie and that's kind of how we'll be doing these videos we'll give you guys a brief little non-spoiler section here and then we'll go upstairs and watch the movie so see you all when we come back Alright, so we just finished Captain America, First Avenger. How do you feel like um, it works as like the first movie that you watch in the series? I think that? seeing it as First Avenger and watching its first movie puts everything into perspective. And We were talking during the movie just to watch it, see a movie that's done, the very first movie done really well and you know that still ties in and still relevant to everything that comes back comes through even 15 years later is mm-hmm. it's crazy that they they did such a good job and so many references get continually played through it starts out with uh, a couple shield agents finding cap in the ice so basically the entire movie is a flashback mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, yeah. then it and then it ends with cap getting um uh, waking up in the future so the basic plot is just that Red Skull finds the Tesseract, which is a thing that reoccur. The Tesseract's probably the most important Infinity Stone because it mm-hmm. gets it's the one that gets the most relevance in all the movies, and so that's the Space Stone, and it's being guarded by Filch from Harry Potter. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, um, yeah, so he gets super killed by Hugo Weaving, and then uh, so Red Skull the Red Skull takes the. Uh, Tesseract, and then he starts making weapons out of it. And this is like one thing I kind of noticed. I'm like, the Tesseract is the space stone. So how do you use that to make weapons? I mean, I guess it, you could just say, well, all of them have power, I guess. I mean, because, you know, Vision's uh, stone is the mind stone, stone and it shoots can, a beam out of his yeah, head. He can beam things out of his head and tear things apart with it. So. Yeah, but I just like, I, I figured that the only one you could really make weapons like that, the way you see Hydra use them, would be the power stone. But again, even <laughs> way back in, you know, when when was when was uh, the movie, this movie came out? 2011. In 2011. Mm-hmm. You know, the very end scene where he the Tesseract starts to go crazy on him as he's holding his hands and he sees space up in, you know, you yeah, you up here at the, in the roof of the of the ship he's in. Which is now important. And, and it, uh, immediately an energy bridge or like a, almost like the... It looks like the Bifrost. Like the Bifrost mm-hmm. shoots, you know, shoots out. I mean, the fact that they were thinking that way back then, you know, they had, they had the whole plot thought out. It was just mm-hmm. impressive. And then uh, Cap... And his skinny special effects. Oh, the beginning special effects. <laughs> I've just never seen it done better. That is insane. Even now, even today, I haven't seen it done better. Even young Robert Downey Jr. or uh, Princess Leia, mm-hmm. it's still nothing. I have, I still have yet to see anything that makes it as, as realistic looking as a skinny little scrawny Chris Evans. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Chris Evans, he's a big dude. I mean, he bulked up huge yeah. for this movie. And they just paste his head onto this skinny dude, and it looks perfect in almost every scene. Like oh, there's maybe fantastic. one scene I can tell, uh, which is where he's like laying down on the bed. You can kind of see like th- that his head's like kind of disproportionate a little bit. But the rest of the movie, like it's insane. And I want to know like uh, what all went into that. How they like because there has to be multiple ways they've done it. Because I feel like they may have done it a couple times with just a camera trick and him wearing really baggy clothes and then uh, and then the other times where his shirt's off w- with uh, CGI and everything 
and it looks really good, Just especially fantastic. for 2011. Yeah. And the rest of the CGI in the movie, you can kind of tell that most of the budget probably went to making Steve Rogers look right for the mm -hmm. part of the movie because it's such a long part of the movie. Because like half the movie he's skinny, mm -hmm. and then the other half he's big Captain America. Yeah. So then, uh, yeah, uh, and Steve Rogers, his personality has stayed pretty consistent. I mean, he's grown. He's had a lot of difficult things that he's gone through in different movies, but. He's still that kid from Brooklyn who um, tried a hundred different yeah. times to join the army. And even then, we saw the you know you kind of you watch it you watch these movies at the very beginning of the MCU development, and then you see that they you know the most recent ones was like Spider-Man: Homecoming and Infinity War. And there's I mean we noticed though one reference you know uh, the Doctor. Uh, yeah. Where are you from? Queens. So where is the little guy from? Actually. Brooklyn. You got hard, kid. Where you from? Queens. <laughs> Brooklyn. It's, uh, man, that, that's crazy. I did not notice that until watching it this time, that that's actually a callback in Civil War. And you can't and say then, enough about that doctor. Uh, yeah, that, that actor, um, what is his name? Uh, Sta uh, Stanley Tuchin? Tuchin? Tucci, yeah. Tucci, yeah. Stanley Tucci. Stanley Tucci. He... Is, has a lot of range because he plays this. He's in Hunger Games, and as the uh, game, as like the announcer on that uh, talk show, and he's a, got a wildly different personality and thing going on in that movie as opposed to this one. And both of them work really well. Yeah. So he's, yeah, he's crazy how good th that actor was. Uh, that actor was in this movie. There was a great cast in this movie. I didn't realize how much I liked the cast in this movie until rewatching it now. With, uh, you know, you got Tommy Lee Jones, you got Hugo Weaving, you got Chris Evans, Haley Atwell, and then Sebastian Stan, who's still Bucky and everything, and then uh, Dominic Cooper as uh, uh, Howard Stark. He was pretty good. I liked uh, his take on Howard Stark because he's yeah. not exactly Tony, but you can tell that he's Tony's dad. <laughs> like, yeah, um, not only his dad, but he's got that just that kind of persona from back in that, you know, in the. In that time period, he's you know like I'm gonna make you a stock kid kind of thing. Yep. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And um, he and I liked seeing the Stark Expo. I mean, the Stark Expo was in this movie, and it's exactly it, like they made it look as similar as it is synthetic in Iron Man. We noticed that in the, in the yeah. Movie, and like, Somebody in the comments has got to tell us who synthetic that's gotta be man a thing. is. Yeah, that's definitely got to be a thing. Synthetic Man was like a little cameo thing in there, but um. Yeah, Stark's Expo is the same as it is in Iron Man 2, and um, then I think, I'm not positive, but he has like a flying car that he's showing off there, mm -hmm. and in if you've seen Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, yeah. Lola, uh, um, a Agent Coulson's car... It flies and yeah. it looks and it's old and it looks similar. I'm like, I'm pretty sure that that's the same car, or at least like a it, version of that car later on. Convertible, and that one was. It, yeah, it was a convertible yeah, in the that was a shield. Hard top so the, yeah. I don't know if it's exactly the same car, but it's probably made by Howard Stark, which yeah. is like, uh, which is a cool. Well, if there's kind a flying back. car, I guarantee it was made by Howard Stark. Yeah. How many times have they? Okay, Howard Stark has to be the character that's been recast the most in the MCU because he play he's played by a guy who looks a lot like uh, Walt Disney in the in the video mm -hmm. tracks that Iron Man finds in Iron Man Two. He's played by a totally different actor that I've seen in other things. I can't think of like what else I've seen him in, but he's uh, played by the, the older version of him that's in Civil War and a couple of the flashback things like at the beginning of Ant Man. And uh, who, there's a different actor that plays Howard Stark, and then there's this one who uh, plays Howard Stark in First Avenger and in Agent Carter. And you were saying like, why didn't they just you know stick with the guy yeah, and just I put old where I makeup on him? For, which came first? But. Yeah, but um, I think that it might have actually worked really well because I mean we've already seen them have somebody carry over with old make like makeup to make them look older yeah. with uh, Carter in um, Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of funny how many because there have been quite a few recasts in um, the MCU. You had Hulk, you had. Um, War Machine. War Machine, and now Howard Stark, and I'm pretty sure that there's been a few others here and there. Yeah. But, um, oh, one of the Warriors 3 was recast, and nobody really noticed, because yeah. nobody really cared about the Warriors 3 and Thor. Yeah, and then I just l like seeing the old um, scenes that just really cement who Captain America is and really build his character, especially that scene where he jumps on the grenade. 
the dummy grenade yeah. and everything. It's like, Tommy Lee Jones is just... Really he is hideous. so funny in this movie. He's still skinny. He yeah. is one of the best <laughs> comedians from a dry, you know, with a dry delivery mm-hmm. ever. Ever. In, yeah. in any movie, he can pull... He, he, can, he can be dramatic, he can be serious, but he can be hilarious and not even mm-hmm. act like it's, you know... He, not even acknowledge the fact that he said something funny. There's just so many moments like that, especially yeah, in the training this whole sequences. Yeah, scene with Zoller when he's when he's in the when he just got captured and yeah. he, he's having his debrief with him. And what is this steak? What is in it? Cow. How about cyanide? Does that give you the rumbly tummy too? I bought you dinner. Yeah, <laughs> it's just fantastic. He's such a goofball, but he's like so serious about it. Yeah. I love it. And Zoller, he's just, I mean, they, he's... He's also he, in Hunger Games, too. Yeah, another, another one's got this great range, and did, and they did a great job of just kind of setting him up for being basically the, the cancer that took over S.H.I.E.L.D. and uh, mm-hmm. setting up Hydra in the midst of everything. You know, that, just, that was just a slick... That was a good... Key plot point. Mm-hmm. That's the only other time you see him, too. I mean, like, he, yep. he, just, he just comes back for and a split-second scene in Winter Soldier to show you, uh, to give you what happened between uh, First Avenger and now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can see that he truly believes in what um, Schmidt's doing. Mm-hmm. You know, even though he had a, he had some moral qualms about how he was doing it and the, and the, the way he was executing it, he still... Because, I mean, he kind of got to the point where he's just like, you know, I'm on board because if I'm not on board, I'm going down with everybody yeah. else that's in his way. So, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, it, after a while of thinking that way you just kind of fall in line yeah. or die and so I mean so you see the development of Hydra but just the you know that initial scene where Cap gets changed and he's you know he comes out of the of the tube and he's just bigger in life and mm-hmm. and then he chases down the Hydra agent that is just that whole fantastic. scene is so good it feels like it's straight out of a comic book like him chasing down this Hydra agent and then like try and saving a couple people here yeah. and there and then he picks up the car door like a shield foreshadowing yeah. the shield that's coming so, later so different than like a you know Spider-Man Homecoming where he's starting to figure out or any of the Spider-Mans you know the three different versions of them kind mm-hmm. of developing their powers trying to figure out how what they can do and they're having a good time he's doing it and in the midst of something super, you know, he just wanted when his mentor, the guy that gave him his chance and gave him his dream, mm-hmm. died right in front of him. And yeah. Seconds later, he's testing out his powers. He's, like, running, he's running down the streets of New York in capris. <laughs> his pants don't fit anymore. Yeah. And he's the I, one you know, superhero he's, that can save the world wearing yeah, capris. Losing his balance <laughs> running and then scaling a fence and then, uh, you know, just, you know, realizing, holy cow, I can jump and I can do this. There was the kind of a thing that we thought was kind of a missed opportunity because there was these giant metal, like, wrecking balls, balls that yeah. were, like, right there. And we're like, why didn't he pick that up and throw it? Yeah, the first but, I mean, I it kind of makes sense. I thought for sure he was going to pick that wrecking ball up and do something with it. No. But it kind of makes sense that like, he wouldn't use it seeing as how the Hydra agent had, like, an eight-year-old kid. Yeah, that's <laughs> true and that kid was great i remember the first time we watched the movie in the theaters people were cheering when the kids like hey get him i can swim yeah it was so good i love that it's just so it's so cheesy 40s comic book kind of yeah. thing and it, but it works really well which is why i think a lot of people criticize this movie on the internet is because they wanted like they wanted winter soldier right away yeah. they wanted the action cap movie um yeah, but this is a good job uh, yeah you get but, to see him run you get to see him jump you get to see him swim yeah, you get to see his strength breaking through the window, you and then throw launching a, that guy out of the water. <laughs> a full-grown man yeah. out of the water from inside the water, and, and then just... he jumps out of the water after him <laughs> and sees him swallow the cyanide, which kind of blows his mind. Mm-hmm. And then two seconds later, you know, he's kind of processing all that. He just had his mentor die. He just saw this guy commit suicide. He just chased him all the way through the streets of New York, and then he's just standing there like, "Holy shit, I'm huge," <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, really just kind of soaking it all in is just amazing. I think the reason why this movie gets so much criticism is because like they spend a, like, they they have like a lot of the cheesy things that have always made Captain America who he is, like the shows that he puts on mm-hmm. to raise war bonds for um, mm-hmm. things and so. And it, is that stuff cheesy? Yeah, but it also is just part of who Cap story. It is part of yeah. like what developed him and he eventually got out of that and he even like makes fun of it himself by drawing himself as like a monkey on a unicycle yeah um, and he does, it's not like he wanted to do any of these things he's just kind of forced to do what he can do 
and he always Cap has always tried to do whatever he can to help people. There is action sequences in this movie though, and there and some of them are actually pretty good. Like mm -hmm. the train scene is pretty good with uh, Bucky and Cap, and then um, there's a brief action scene where Cap breaks into the Hydra base, and then there's the final battle between him and Red Skull. Mm -hmm. But the train scene is really good because that one feels like it's straight up out of a comic too and I'm wondering if there's foreshadowing in there because uh, during the fight um, Cap gets knocked down and loses his shield and Bucky picks up the shield mm -hmm. and then he gets blasted out the window or the, out the hole that gets blasted in the train yeah. and so um, and that's where he falls and as much as I love this movie there are some things I think that the Marvel movies in general don't understand how falling works because if you fall from a certain height, you're dead. Yeah. And, um, I'm sorry, the height that Bucky fell from, that's a death height. You don't just lose your arm out of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A little bit more goes into that. Yeah, same with, um, Iron Man when he falls, um, in the first Iron Man when he, like, builds his, uh, prototype suit, the crappy one in the Middle East, he, like, flies straight up and then he falls into sand. Oh, and I'm like, yeah. It was soft sand. It was real soft sand, right? I'm pretty sure that that wouldn't kill you at all. Nor would, you know, falling from God knows how high in Civil War for War Machine. <laughs> but, um,. Yeah, I'm like he got paralyzed yeah, from it, but I'm like, I, I, I'm like, I'm sorry. If you're a human being, just a normal human falling that far, you're dead. That's true. But that's kind of been a consistent thing, though, that they've had in these movies. So I don't think that we really need. It's kind of like why does Star Wars have sound in space? Yeah, just forget it. It's mm -hmm. it's it's it doesn't matter. And so, um, yeah, but the train scene was really good, and I really hope that that is foreshadowing, because I like Sebastian Stan as Bucky, and I would love to see him try to be Captain America mm -hmm. in his own series if they choose to kill off Cap in Avengers 4. Yeah. And the war montage, I think that that's another thing that people didn't really like, was that they, like, the parts that actually feel like World War II, like a gritty war movie, are in a montage. It's easy to and forget, because it happens so fast, you know, how much experience Cap had fighting in, in fighting as Captain America because mm -hmm. you look and he comes back and all of a sudden he's you know starting to you know cut his teeth in the Avengers mm -hmm. or for uh, you know for Shield and mm -hmm. you're like well you know we didn't really see him do well you really did see him do a lot you know thousands you know hundreds of you know battles that he fought to try to get take down Hydra mm -hmm. or dozens whatever but he. Uh, I mean, he did do a lot, but he only got to see montages of it, so he didn't get to see, you know... Not that there's any amount of time in a movie to be able to show that kind of yeah. extensive and it wouldn't, experience, but I, he was fantastic in the in those scenes, you know. Mm -hmm. Although, I will say, Hydra builds some pretty damn large tanks. <laughs> I don't, tank was comedically huge. I don't really huge. think those, those tanks really that big, <laughs> uh, you know. I don't know who the cameraman was, but he, he you know... Yeah, that tank was a beast. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, I would have liked to see that, but I also see the necessity of not focusing on that part of the movie a ton. Mm -hmm. And it also kind of leaves it pretty objective how long Cap was Cap. And you got back up second, because, you know, there's, there's a scene where he's, you know, he, uh... He gets... He, he introduces the S.H.I.E.L.D., which is another character. Mm -hmm. you can, I mean, Cap's S.H.I.E.L.D. is a character in and of itself. And so... Pretty much, inter yeah. Introducing his S.H.I.E.L.D., you know, right after he got caught kissing... Uh, what's her face from uh, from Hunger Games? <laughs> yeah, and uh, Game of Thrones. Natalie you know, Dormer. Yeah, uh, you know, and then she and then he gets shot at by uh, <laughs> by, by Carter. Agent Carter, which was great. Oh, it's um, so funny. But you get to meet the Shield, and the Shield is uh, you know how he use it. You know, you get to see him use it. You get to see him choose it. You get you know, and uh, mm -hmm. you get your first taste of what a vibranium's capable of. Uh, yeah, I mean that's and his suit. And then he's like, hey, I got a couple ideas for my suit. And they're both just kind of like in awe because he just got shot at you know, in, <laughs> in a lab, and uh, and she's like, and he, he, he's like, whatever you want, pal. And so then you see the first Captain America, you know, combat suit, and it's fantastic. So it's so well, so well done. Mm -hmm. And then you come down to like the climax of the movie where um, they're taking on uh, um, the, uh, Red Skull's main base. And this is where the CGI kind of starts to look a little dated mm -hmm. in certain scenes, especially on that giant ass plane. Yeah. And uh, he mentions I the stuff is big. Maybe yeah, right. just, maybe they're just big. It's all big. <laughs> they just got big mm -hmm. vehicles, they're real big stuff. For something. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Red oh, Skull. Yeah. <laughs> but um, that's why there's no little Red Skulls. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, he mentions Valkyrie, though, like the wings of the Valkyrie, which we now, like, know that Valkyries are real mm -hmm. in this universe yeah. and that they actually existed as uh, guardians of Odin, which is... Um, Odin is mentioned in this movie quite a bit by Red Skull also because uh, Odin apparently hid the Tesseract on Earth mm -hmm. um, thousands of years ago and he, and he found it and now with this um, final battle he's um, Red Skull is planning on using it. it in a little brown box hidden in a wall. Yup. I mean... I'm sorry. <laughs> Odin's a little more creative than that. I mean, he had a destroyer protecting the stuff up on him. <laughs> and he put it in a box... <laughs> You know, under a tree. Well, I mean, it's better than what it's I'm better saying. than what Thor did for the reality stone. Maybe, Thor maybe just like hit it, it with the collector, way, and then people just took it out to look at it, and we're playing with it. Oh, let's put it in this brown box. You know, <laughs> I didn't. You know, it's a little anticlimactic as to where they hide the test rack. Yeah. Or you mean um, where they hide the um, all of, all the stuff in Odin's vault? Because well, it is yeah, the test I mean, rack. It is the test rack that they yeah, hide in there. It's up there now yeah. because they're just like that. Didn't wasn't hidden very well. Mm -hmm. We're taking this back. You guys suck. <laughs> yeah. Oh we man. Gave, we trusted you with it. You put it in a brown little little wooden box. That didn't work. Mm-hmm. Oh man. So this big final battle. Um, I, w I I didn't remember it at first until I went back and watched this one again. Um, that Red Skull and him actually have a pretty decent face off inside the plane. Yeah, they do, and they're flying all over the place. I mean, it was yeah, it was like the good battle. The, the plane nose dives and it kind of kind of goes like the no gravity, mm -hmm. um, and they have to like still be punching at each other and thro and he almost like slices at his throat with a shield at one point, mm -hmm. and um, but then eventually he um, he doesn't even really defeat Red Skull. Red Skull just like uh, picks up the Tesseract and then gets beamed like by yeah. what looks like the Bifrost into space, and that doesn't become relevant until you know several movies later. <laughs> Like, in case you haven't seen that movie, yeah. we won't reference it. Yeah, well, I mean, there's, there's going to be a spoiler warning before we even start talking about this segment of the movie, but okay. yeah. And then, um, so Cap, and then Cap um, has to sacrifice himself, which is um, a pretty emotional scene where he has to talk to uh, Carter while he's uh, putting the plane down. I take a few issues with this, like, just logically. Because there's probably several ways he could have gotten out of this without crashing the plane. Could have turned it around. Could have done anything else besides, you know, smash it into the ground. But I think that what they could have done to easily fix that problem is, um, if you watch, um, they smash into the controls during their fight, and then uh, Red Skull goes over and flips a switch that says autopilot. So what I think would have been interesting is if Cap... Um, couldn't pilot it because the controls were broken from when they jumped on it and the only thing that was operational was the autopilot so no matter what these bombs were going to go where they're gonna go and so what he had to do is take out the engines so that the thing would crash and then he could talk to either um, way Carter. Cap is pretty resourceful cat he got the flag off the pole yeah. nobody else got and got the free ride back yeah he, you just got to assume he looked at the controls he Figured everything out, and he realized there's no other way. This is the only way. I can see it's. I not mean, you can work. assume that. That's but what I'm saying. <laughs> but you got to give Cap credit. Either you believe in him, or you don't. He knows what he was doing. That was the only way out. Either that, or even like if because they he had a hot chick to dance with when he got back. There was another way out. He was gonna find it. And there wasn't any other way. <laughs> All right, Dad, if you say so. But I think that it would have been just better if he had to like. Do, even if like when they because they specifically run into like the like steering for the ship if it like broke so that he couldn't turn side to side or something you or, or like all much. he could do is like just uh, just, just come out uh, they just have to give a reason for why well, the only just, thing they could have possibly done they, was crash it in the ground reason no I mean, he had to see about a girl there was no way he was gonna get, not do it he couldn't do it all right all right but then he crashed and um. Yeah, so, and then we get a little bit of the after, like, the war ending, uh, Howard Stark continuing to look for the Tesseract and for, um... Finding uh, it. Uh, and then you get this awesome, like, thing that just kind of sums up the movie for you with the kid who has the trash can. Uh, yeah, the trash can and little Howling Commandos chasing him across the street. And yeah. Cap was a legend. Yeah, and that's uh, that's so cool. And that comes back kind of as, um... Who, that kid Coulson. is Chuck Coulson's grandpa. Right, yeah. <laughs> That would be awesome yeah. if that was like that yeah. should be a retcon thing because they they retcon in Iron Man two that the little kid that Iron Man saves in Iron Man two is Peter Parker, 
um, he's like wearing an Iron Man thing, and he's gonna like shoot one of the one of um, Whiplash's drones. Oh. And he's like wearing a hel- uh, Iron Man helmet, like a toy Iron Man helmet, and he like points at it, and then Iron Man comes down, blasts it, and he's like, "Good job, kid. That's Peter Parker." They've legitimately said that's Peter oh, Parker wow. now. Okay. So I think that's a really cool retcon because it's like then it makes it feel like Spider-Man's always been in mm-hmm. the MCU. But um, and that would be a cool retcon if that was Coulson's like grandfather or something, mm-hmm. and that's how he got the cards that he has in Avengers and everything. Yeah. But yeah. Um, and I like the final scene where he wakes up in the future and um, he figures out that he where he is and mm-hmm. then runs out and then there you see um, Sam L. Jackson as uh, Nick Fury and. He, like, tells him, you've been asleep, Cap, for a long time and everything. And then, 70 years. 70 years, yeah. And he just, uh, instant, instantaneously, and this is how you know, that was the only way that he was going to get out of that plane, that situation, was to crash that plane, because first thought in his mind is, you going to be okay? Yeah. Yeah, I just... I had a date. Man. That sucks. Which is why there, there's like um, these mid credits that are going on with like all this art and the music's uh, epic. Yeah, that boom, Sylvester dun, 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 just fantastic. Dun. That um, music, yeah, Captain America music is just up there with Harry Potter, Star Wars. Yeah, you know, just fantastic. That's the one thing. A lot of people uh, say that the MCU has no memorable music except for the Avengers theme, and I'm like, oh, no. no. I'm Captain like, America's music. That's that's something. And that's yeah, because I mean it perfectly embodies the time period he comes mm-hmm. from and like the heroic nature of his character yep and it, it's just that that like that trumpet sound just going boom but a dum 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 it's so the only thing that I think people don't remember it is because of how many freaking movies there are in the MCU. Yeah, there's a lot of movies. There's, and and all of them have their own theme. Ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so. so it's just like, I, yeah. that's the thing. The reason why people remember Harry Potter and Star Wars and a lot of the other ones more is because they've been repeated a lot. Yeah. You hear that Star Wars theme every time that the crawl happens. Yeah. You hear that Harry Potter thing every time that the title of the movie pops up. Yeah. And, um... And it, of course, it's going to be more memorable if it's repeated more often. Sure. But um, I think that Captain America: First Avenger really deserves like mm-hmm. a lot of recognition for its music. So ratings. Yeah. So ratings. Well, one more thing that we'll say before that um, is I wish that there was a mid-credit scene where you see Carter waiting to dance with Cap, and he doesn't show up because yeah. that would still be really sad. So you can see like the end of both their stories mm-hmm. in this movie. And then um, the cool thing about the after credit scene of this one, like the way after credit scene, is that it isn't an after credit scene. It's a trailer for Avengers. That was crazy. And yeah, that was, back then, that was cool. Because mm-hmm. like, everybody was wondering, because after Iron Man 1, when he's like, uh, I'm going to bring you in on the Avengers initiative, um, Nobody knew if that was, it was actually going to work because mm-hmm. nobody had ever done it before. Brought four characters from four separate movie series to one movie. Yeah. And that's interesting because um, that was like them saying, this is happening, guys. The subplots <laughs> in each one that lead into one major plot. Yeah. Because, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got the Tesseract already in Captain America. You got Loki and Thor. Yeah. You got um, Iron Man. And you got Nick Fury and all of it kind of mm-hmm. tying it all together. And Coulson. Yeah. And Coulson. And then, um, yeah, so we'll give our ratings for Captain America, the first Avenger. I would give it an 80 out of 100 just for, um, it, it is exactly what it needs to be. A lot of people don't like it because it's not as action-packed as Winter Soldier or Civil War, but it's not the point of this movie. The point of this movie is to really pay homage to where Captain America came from in comics and the time period in which he came out, it, like, came out, which is, like, during World War II, mm-hmm. and... Not necessarily capturing the grid of it, but just capturing like the the feel of uh, wanting to fight for what's right when yeah. you can't when you can't do anything else. I'd and, say an 85 out of 100 for a couple different reasons. One, uh, especially when it comes to superhero movies, it's pretty bold to spend this much time on character development as opposed to showing the superhero um, doing super things and and showing powers and showing gadgets and showing you know mm-hmm. they spent a lot of just dialogue time and character development and situational um, development to show who Steve Rogers was and why he was Captain America and how he was chosen and the history of 
you know, why he's so unique in and of himself because nobody, because you know, the serum's gone and yeah. the doctor's killed, and so um, I think that's pretty bold that they chose to do that. And number two, I, you know, I kind of look at a, I always look at a movie, you know, the music, the characters, the depth of the the ensemble or the cast that's in it. That one's it's just every character just rich, deep. You know mm-hmm. who they are. Fantastic actors throughout the whole thing. The music's fantastic. Um, and would I watch it again? Have it, can I see it more than one time? And I, I could watch this movie, you know, over and over again. And still, there's there's really no dull point through it for me mm-hmm. because the char- I the, I enjoy the character development. I thought they did a great job. Yeah, but first Avenger, great movie, great great way to start the MCU if you ever try to watch the entire thing all the way through. Yeah. And um, yeah, so guys, um, thanks for wa- watching our review of Captain America the First Avenger. We're going to be going through all of them here. So stick with us and we'll see you all next time. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments what your favorite MCU movie is. Like, share, subscribe, and check out our Patreon. It's right up there on the screen. And remember, we're not your boss, we're your friends. So join us next time and we'll all hang out. Bye.